London, 1st of May. Dear Mr. Darrell, I am Chili Hawes, director of the October Gallery in London. A friend of mine has shown me paintings signed by Oscar Epps, which I found very beautiful. Then I discovered that Oscar Epps was the very same Lawrence Darrell, whose novels I have admired for many years. I have read everything of yours I could find. I'm coming to the south of France in three weeks and would be very delighted if I could meet you in Sommier and talk with you about a future exhibition of your paintings at the October Gallery. Please let me know if this intrusion will be at all possible and if so, what date would be convenient for you? With all best wishes, Chili Hawes. Oh, mais pauvre dame, à cette heure aussi, hein. je suis désolé, mais absolument rien. Hein. Oui, je crois qu'il vous reste que du stop à faire. Hein. Désolé, madame. I have read everything of yours I could find. Well, that's not quite true. What if he asks me about quinks, which I didn't ever finish? I've read the Black Book, the Alexandria Quartet, Bitter Lemons, and the other travel books, and Dark Labyrinth. I haven't read Tunka Nunquam and the last novels of the Avignon Quintet. Of course, I've read Antobus, and I know a bit about his poetry. And all kinds of biographical stuff about him and Henry Miller, and the diaries of Anais Nin. Wild people.
les hommes de monsieur Durel. Votre portail, vous votez par les escaliers et vous nous avez votre Durel. Au plaisir. Merci beaucoup. À samedi. Au marché. Okay. D'accord. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Hello, I'm Chili. How do you do? Very nice to be here. How extraordinary. How did you get here? Someone gave me a ride from Lunella. This is our local nectar. Your health. Dear. Well, thank you so much for your rather mysterious letter coming from London. And you come from London, and you're an American. I've been living there for several years, seven in fact. Seven years? Mm -hmm. I was intrigued by your enclosure. What is this gallery that you're supposed to be running? Is it, is it a serious gallery or is it... Uh... Absolutely. It's a gallery and it is in Old Gloucester Street, very near to Old your Gloucester. friend Bernard Stone's. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. It is really a bow shot. Hmm. We show work from all over the world. And uh, but really, uh, why, why, why have you come here? Because Oscar Epps' work is... Um, Mrs. Very Epps. intriguing to me, and I've seen many drawings, and I would like to know Oscar Epps. Epps. I'm just a Sunday painter, you know, in, in a country of great painters. One, one can't be too pretentious. Uh, but as an extension of the sensibility, I learned what the French felt in, in terms of sensibility through paint, really. I started with the painters before I could speak the language. And I suddenly realized that it was all mixed up with eating. Uh, that, in fact, art for the French was an element, a psychic element. It was a psychic lunch. Uh, so that their attitude, when they looked at the painting, uh, was a, the attitude of someone looking at a cheese board. Nourishment, but essential. Mm. It's not our mm. way. And the Anglo-Saxon Philistinism just negates that. It's become something that's valuable. Oh, decorative. Yes, you know, uh, or prestige-wise, but that's not really, not really eatable. And once I realized that, I realized that the French were without pretensions about art, and we are full of them. So I had valuable lessons to learn, yeah. And I haven't wasted a moment. What do you have? Well, I have a whole lot of watercolors and odd things lying around here. I'm, I would especially like to see your oils, actually. Is this a sommier? Uh, no, it's an imaginary. It's an imaginary landscape, and uh, it, it's a cheat, really. It's an accident. But why is but it? But don't tell anyone. It just. Uh, I had a glass of this wine. is marvelous. I had a glass of wine, and it came out beautifully after months of indecision. And uh, here's a picture of Saf, my daughter, looking at the sea. I discovered a pot of gold paint in the garage there, which somebody was gilding one of the crosses in the square, and it seemed to use it up, and it gives a wonderful dead sort of feel to the center of it. Um, and it, as, as you see, it's a very improvised sort of feeling. This is only to show you the sort of thing. It's really um, a bit of a cheat. But the point is that once you start painting, you start feeling in a new way. How did you begin painting? Uh, I've, at the beginning, I wasn't very, very courageous. Oh, a uh, valuable experience. When I was 20 in Paris, the first girl, um, I used to read in the Jardin de Luxembourg, and I was picked up by a young Lycian there who was studying at the Lycée. Um, I thought at first it was my charm that seduced her, but no, she wanted a devoir done. 
She was in the middle of Walter Scott, a very bad paragraph in bad prose, and uh, she needed some help with it. So she invited me back for lunch so that I could do her devoir. And she cooked me, and for the first time I saw a French girl, uh, her attitude to French food was the attitude of Picasso. And then she showed me her great treasure. Uh, she, out of a cupboard, she took a, a wash drawing that she had bought on the installment plan. She was paying for it week by week. Uh, a Signorelli, a small, uh, a small watercolor, quite expensive, which she had uh, opted for. And she was spending her money, it was, um, it was on, uh, on the installment plan, and she gave it to herself every day for an hour. Uh, she'd open the cupboard and take this out and admire it when the light was right. Mm -hmm. I suddenly realized that 40 miles away, my compatriots over the channel, nothing like this was going on in their minds, in their hearts, in their souls. I fell in love. <laughs> Tuesday, May 20th, the day of my arrival. I take in many impressions all at once. Mr. Darrell took me to the town hall of Sommier, where the mayor, on behalf of the French Minister of Culture, decorated him in a perfect formal ceremony. Monsieur Laurence Durel, au nom de Jacques Lang, ministre de la Culture, Je vous remets le cordon de commandeur de l'Ordre des Arts et des Lettres. He insisted I stay in his strange house and gave me the room of his daughter, Sotho, who died a year ago at the age of 30. Now he has sent me to Le Glacier, the favorite bistro of Henry Minner, right on the banks of the Vidoule. What a strange and sleepy town this is. Sommière, somnifère, somnambule, some. Vidor, river the Roman legionary noosed, seven piers whose sharpened fangs slide from stone gums to soothe and comb where the lustrous nervous water hangs. A stagnant town, a someone's home from home, if the bored consular ghost should reappear, he would repose the question with a sigh and find it unanswered still. What under heaven could a Roman find to amuse him here? It won't. He's gone on furlough, unregretted, now powdered with drowsy lilies, hobbled, dusted by old Orion, the glib water floor, a planet cobbled darkness reinters the history that the consul found a bore. Pour sky in water, softly mix and wait. While birds whistle and sprain and curve, they must have faltered here at the very gate of Gaul, seduced by such provender, such rich turf, bewitched and made their sense of duty swerve. No less now under awnings, half asleep, pale functionaries of a similar sort of creed, all afternoon a river watching keep two civil servants loitering over Annecy.
guys, are these all your love letters? <laughs> love letters? You know what a fan mail is? It's a, it's a mixture of begging letters, admiration, demands for autographs, and so on. It's a huge mixture. Yes, but there are love letters also. <laughs> uh, well, w one of the one of the marvelous things is that with with your writing, uh, you can a actually um, change people's lives. And so they can, in a sense, fall in love with you, and they write you fan letters, and they're very agreeable to receive. But I don't know very much about that uh, subject, I mean, about love in general. It's a great mystery, because one projects so much of oneself into it, one invests so much that one tends to obscure the, um, the object, the philosophic object. I'm waiting to become a hundred. And then what? Then I'll know everything. But everything. Uh, what is the highest form of love? Self abnegation, I should think. Because you're always standing in your own light. <coughs> you're always standing in your own. You're creating a shadow, which is your own personality. The more you can uh, rid yourself of it, the freer you are to really love free you are to exploit your love as it should be exploited in a sense. I was only conscious of that because I was once loved that way, uncritically. Normally one doesn't, one loves critically. Uh, but only once in my life I had a relationship with a woman uh, who really loved me totally uncritically. That was close. Yeah, mm, it was a, a remarkable experience. It got me weaving. How did you meet Claude? Um, in the middle of the war, she came to work in my radio station. She was a brilliant executive and good typist, and she spoke four languages fluently. And she was cultivated to uh, with culture, intelligence, an idea better than a civil servant in a sense. She looked after my foreign uh, foreign broadcasts for some time. Was it a coup de food? Uh, I don't quite know. I suppose, yeah, oh, well, on my side, perhaps, not on hers. She needed convincing. Um, you spoke about uncritical love. Uh, and then yes, you... I mean, to say, once, uh, once somebody gets to know your character, they can decide whether they, you're lovable or not. And if they decide you're lovable, it's an unchangeable thing. It's not due to passion or anything blinding due to uh, an evaluation of your real value, of your human value. Different thing. To start loving from that as a base is pretty solid. I often thought of Montolive's relationship with Leila, and this was a very close relationship, at least in the beginning. Yes, unselfish love. It's very hard to, it's very hard to make it consciously. It's, uh, it should be a predisposition of your character, really. But who is unselfish? Are you? Who was the first woman you ever loved? Loved? I never loved. You never have? Never. So all this talk is only from the other side? What do you mean the other side? Now don't you pull the blankets over to your side like that. The contrary. I've had a long and adventurous life. But um, the questions of love, I know nothing really about at all. I'm very fragile, and I'm blown this way and that by the winds of chance, the winds of fortune, and the winds of passion. And lucky, too, before I got too old. Now that I'm, I'm in my late 70s, um, naturally, all this is in the past. So I have to reconstruct these things vaguely from memory. It's difficult for me to answer you very truthfully. Um, what else do you have up your sleeve? What do you mean up my the sleeve? Future. Oh, nothing. I'm going to learn to play the violin and play boo. I'm going to get Yehudi Menuhin to give me some lessons, and I'm going to play bool in the Boolodrome here. And I'll organize a very quiet and spectacularly un, un, uh, um, 
unviolent life for myself. Contemplation is the new life. Wednesday, May 21st, Place de l'Esplanade, a game of boule in progress. I am the only woman around. It's a man's place, mainly old men. This morning, Lawrence and I walked through the ancient town whose caves underneath the streets date back to Roman times. Contemplation is his new line, he said. That could have been the code word of Sommier throughout the centuries. Lawrence has gone to visit Ludo, the herbalist, the same man I found out who gave me the ride from Lunel Station to Daryl's house. He collects all kinds of herbs, flowers, seeds, dries and mixes them, and sells them in the marketplace. Cures for over 200 maladies. I'd like to be with them now and listen to their conversation. Hey, maestro. Oh, Larry. Comment ça va? Oh, mais oui, on est toujours là en train de couper des plantes. Ah, Ouais. Tout fabriqué ici. Ben, je coupe. Ouais. Je coupe les plantes pour les faire sécher. Parce que si on les coupe avant, elles sont ouais. beaucoup plus vite sèches. Et si on les coupe comme ça, après, quand elles sont sèches, ouais. c'est trop dur. C'est trop dur. Vous voulez pas vous asseoir euh, Je vais chercher un truc. Ouais, vous prenez Oui, oui, oui. Ah. Dis-moi, Ludo, est-ce que vous fabriquez des filtres d'amour J'allais vous demander. J'ai reçu des requêtes pour pour des filtres d'amour. Ah oui, pardi. Vous le faites Ah oui, pardi. C'est-à-dire vous avez les secrets de Cléopâtre oh, ouais. sous la main. Ouais, ouais. Je fais je fais une préparation qui donne un très bon résultat. La preuve. Comment la preuve La preuve, c'est que j'ai 70 ans et j'ai une femme qui a 33 ans. <rire> voilà, et j'ai pas besoin de faire appel aux voisins, vous voyez non, non, je, non, euh... je satisfais la... la, la... <rire> Est-ce ouais, que ouais. tu me permets d'interroger Martine Oui, bon, il faut, il faut, il m'a dit. Ah. Oui. Euh, il faut dire que c'est une préparation qu'on peut boire soit en tisane, oui. soit un mélange que je fais pour faire un vin tonique, un apéritif. Alors on fait macérer des plantes dans de l'alcool, on fait macérer des plantes dans du vin, puis on mélange le tout et ça fait un vin aphrodisiaque. Aphrodisiaque ah. C'est rien que la base de plantes aphrodisiaques, de la berce, de la sarriette, de la menthe, oh là là. du serpolé. Et la police Oh, mais la police, ils sont contents, là. Ils sont contents. <rire> Pardon, comme ça, il y a moins de viol. C'est la vérité, effectivement. Oui, parce que, mais, il arrive qu'il y ait des viols parce que mais, les femmes, des fois, elles ne sont pas trop portées à ça. Alors, si le mari, il en fait boire à sa femme, en douce, en disant, faisant croire que c'est un apéritif, la femme, elle est toujours en chaleur, là. Hein. 
Oh, mon Dieu, je des choses. C'est bon, c'est du tonnerre. Il y en a beaucoup plus que ce qu'on croit qu'il y en a besoin. C'est une des préparations que je vends le plus. C'est vrai Non, ouais. je, je plaisante, mais à la fois, c'est très non, sérieux. Non, 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 non c'est très sérieux. sérieux. On plaisante, mais c'est très sérieux. On ouais. plaisante toujours d'abord sur le sexe. D'accord. Il y a toujours des plaisanteries sur le sexe. Ouais. Un coup, hein? Voilà, un petit coup. <rire> un petit coup. <rire> un petit coup. Ça dessoule. Ça dessoule. Là, qu'est-ce qu -ce que c'est que ces chansons? Là? Ça dessoule. Hein? Oui. Non, mais, 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 ça mais, dessoule. Il y avait, il y avait euh, une chanson. Mais... Non, les meilleures chansons, c'est les chansons de Tino aussi. Ouf, Tino aussi, il a la. Je sais pas combien il a, il a chanté le chanson. Il a chanté sur les guitares, par exemple. Oui. Bonne des oui. guitares, je pense à vous. Loin des guitares, sans cesse je pense à vous. À votre voix dont la beauté m'avait grisé. À nos serments, nos espoirs, nos plus tendres baisers. Par les nuits chaudes, Auprès de vous, sans cesse rôde le souvenir d'autrefois, et tout mon cœur, mon pauvre cœur, s'en va vers vous. Loin des guitares, au chant si doux. Ça, c'était Tino Rossi. À la santé de Tino Rossi. Was Lawrence always earning his money as a writer? What necessity, what decisions, what experiences produced the raw material of his novels? If Arnotti, Darley, and Purse Warden are all this one man Darrell, who is behind his great female characters? If Eve is Justine, then Claude is Clea? These photos I found in my room. I must ask him about them. Well, there you are, there's the family. What more do you want? Aren't they noble? Aren't they wonderful? Who could do better? <laughs> <laughs> 